Welcome back to the Q&A podcast. My name is Jason Avant and I have my main man, Quentin Michael, and we're on the Inside the Birds platform again, coming back at you this week. Roster cuts have been made. Roster is final. So we think not so fast. There's always last minute moves, but we're excited about that. And we're going to talk about all of that today. First, we're going to do a few things of housekeeping. The first thing that we have to do is say what's up to my man, Quentin Michael. Q, say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back. Excited for another another episode. And let's have some fun, man, as always. Yeah, we have fun doing the show. We, we love you guys. Um, and thank you for all the feedback that we're getting. Um, we're trying our best to um, give you fresh content. And um, we want to shout out to Jeff and to Adam and Hunter and everyone that's responsible for um, the success of this um, podcast and everyone that's tuning in, everyone that is checking us out. Thank you guys for listening to us. Continue to send those, um, to send those questions to inside the birds at Gmail. Dot com and we'll make sure that we get to your answer at some point, though we're getting into football season and we have to talk about a lot of things. But we want to say thank you, guys. Um, let's start out, Q. Let's start out. Roster cuts have been made. There's been some surprises in this roster. And we talked about them a little bit. So we talked about it like last week because we're a little bit better um, at kind of assessing the situation. But there's still some surprise. Yeah. One of the biggest things that we're surprised about is the cutting of the guy that went rampant for three games last year, three or four games last year, um, compiling more yards than most of the receivers that year uh, <laughs> in those few games. And Travis Fogum gets the ax from Howie Roseman. What do you think about this? Oh, game? man, this is never a good, <laughs> never a good day when you get the ax, man. And, and you know, it's it's a tough thing. And it's unfortunately, we, we kind of chatted about it and kind of mm -hmm. felt that things were kind of trending this way. And you know, it just sucks because he's a guy, he's a young player. Um, you know, you never want to see a guy that's really still kind of in his prime that has a lot of potential, um, you know, end up in a situation where he's back on the on the market. So, you know, it's it's unfortunate, um, you know, that we couldn't, uh, that he couldn't or the area or just the team or whatever it is, couldn't just kind of develop him into the star that he has the potential to be. So it, it, it's just unfortunate, man. I, I don't know, man, but yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I don't necessarily like, so I have like intimate information and, and things because, you know, I was there um, with Travis and I understand um, how they kind of, the Eagles, the Eagles yeah, truly kind of stunted his growth because they went with um an older player when there was no hope for the playoffs. And, shine, and that man. that doesn't make sense to me. You got this, this young group that's playing hard, and you're going to put in an older Deshaun, an older Alshon that's not going to equate to wins right now, and the season is basically lost. So, therefore, you should play the younger players. And I thought that Travis took that personally. yeah, And it affected him in a way that caused him to digress because – or regress because um, it – it messed with his confidence. And I think a guy that's been cut three times, there's there's an undertone of him not being able to deal with um, shaky ground yeah, or adversity, yeah. adversity, a lot of competition, maybe a coach yelling at him a certain way. He may be that guy that goes in a tank and everything is going well. He may look like a world beater, but when things are a little bit unsafe, unsure, not in the best situation. He hadn't stepped up to the plate. And I think that's the beginning of it. Now you get this year, you bring in Devontae Smith. You got a rising Quez Watkins. You have Jalen Rager, who they um, have high exp expectations for. You got John Hightower, who has high expectations. You got a first rounder, um, second rounder, and uh, J.J. Ortega Whiteside. You're undrafted. And they put a, um, a lot of pressure on him. And I don't, I don't necessarily know that he responded in the way – and there's a lot of people um, that are questioning this. Why wasn't it J.J. Ortega Whiteside? And we'll get to that. But I think mentally, mentally is where Travis Fogum lost this. Because yeah. instead of taking the road of being um, a pro, a pro's pro, one that is not going to allow the coaches to break them, a decision to break them, that they're going to show up to work, they're going to keep the same attitude, he had 
a mentality of a powder at times. And that was the message that came across from um, the coaching this year. That was the message that came across that he's not responding to this adversity because he thinks that he has been established already because he's had these three or four games. And you know how we do in Philadelphia. Yeah. Three yeah. or four games. <laughs> And he's looking great, man. Why the coaches won't play Travis? Why you know <laughs> this and that and the other? And, and he's he should make the team. And and before you know it, you patting this guy on the back. You patting this guy on the back. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Guess what? Sometimes people believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe when they believe it, they don't work as hard because they feel like they arrived. Yeah. And maybe that's the problem. And if you feel like you arrived in this league, especially when you haven't, especially when you're undrafted, especially when you've already been cut three times and you have a boatload of competition of worthy guys that have been drafted and has shown themselves um, adequate enough to play in this league. When you put that formula together, it doesn't bode well for Travis. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some of the things that kind of got him max. And then when you look at it, like through camp, Quez ball. There was times when Hightower was was healthy that he balled. Mm -hmm. There was times Jalen Rager, one hand catch two times, um, competitive practice um, throughout training camp, not in the games, but they say he balled. And and guess what? You know who else who balled? JJ. Yeah, that's right. JJ was unguardable at certain times of 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 of, of um, uh, competitive practice against other teams. Yeah. So when you put all of these things together, you're the only dude that's not showing up to the party. G Ward's going to do his thing. G Ward's going to be G Ward. You know who he is. He's not going to change. He's going to be consistent. Yeah. You're the guy that's not showing up to the party. Do you have the talent? Yes. You don't have the mindset of a champion. You don't have the mindset of a go-getter. You don't have the mindset of a dog at times. And maybe you're pouting and you're feeling sorry for yourself or you listen to the praise of the outside. It'll do you in every time. Yeah. And that's the thing that's probably to me the most frustrating because, all right, so whatever happened with the last coaching staff, you you know, you ended up on the bench. You mm -hmm. felt like you should have been starting. We got a whole new staff, right? You have a chance to start over Clean fresh slate. and and create a whole new, um, you know, a whole new aura about yourself, a whole new um, path. You can take yourself on a completely different path. New yeah. coaching staff. Um, maybe say, I think the same receiving receiver. Same, coach, same, right? coach. same receiver. Mm -hmm. coach. But, right. he, but, but the still, coach, I mean, likes him. Right. And so it's, 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 that's the thing that's the saddest part is that you have a perfect situation to, you know, take advantage, get that dog in, you go out there, compete and show. And even if, and, and we, we say this all the time in NFL, you're not necessarily create, you're not necessarily, necessarily competing just for yourself. You're competing to show all the other teams in the NFL, what you mm -hmm. can do. You, you want to do? go out on, on the preseason game and, and ball out in the preseason game. So like, if you do get cut, right. The, the team that you played against might say, you know what, that's a good player, man. He 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 balled out against us. Let's bring him in. Yeah. So now you're in a situation where you didn't show up in practice. You went in the tank during the games, and now you're on. You know you're you don't have a you're not on the team right now. Hopefully someone gives him a shot. But if you go in the tank, you're definitely not going to get a shot. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm hoping that he showed enough, and there's someone that's going to give him another chance, and maybe he'll this will be his opportunity to really take advantage and and take himself to the next level because I, I, I agree with you. He does have a ton of talent and, um, you know, just wishing the best for him. It's just, it's just unfortunate when you see a guy that has a, so much potential and then they just kind of right here, they just kind of shut themselves down. Yeah, you know? it, it, it happens. It happens. And the thing is Q is that in this league, you got to be consistently good. Yes. You can't have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, right? You can't have, I'm here. Then I'm like the stock market, bam, I'm down. <laughs> like you can't go up, you can't go down. You got to be like consistently rising. No dips. You're consistently rising. And very few. If there is a dip, there's just, you're still climbing, right? You can't go all the way down. And and be, because that inconsistency will get you cut because you don't know what you're going to get. And that's like one of the things for a coach that drives them insane when he doesn't know what he's going to get each and every week. Am I going to get the good Travis that's that's deboing DBs and, and and snatching the ball from him? Or am I going to get crying and complaining Travis that doesn't um, fight for the ball at times? It's like you can't be both. I can't figure out when um when what times I'm going to be motivated. It just got to be in you. And then yeah. you're going to think like, man, maybe 
it's the other person and it's not the motivated one. Maybe that's the, the dominant person in Travis is maybe it's the, the one that's not motivated, you know? Mm. So, and that, and that's what you got to think because these things keep happening in the current when he's definitely good enough and has the, the skill set to be good. And, and with this generation now, um, instead of, instead of, um, instead of fighting back and being, being, uh, proving someone wrong, being encouraged in a way by a coach getting after you and saying, you know what, I'm gonna prove you wrong. A lot of these kids go in the tank, man. And mm -hmm. and I don't know the I don't know the remedy or the answer for it because I'm too old school minded and I don't know the answers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, man. It's, a, it's it's tough, man. It's a different, different world out there. <laughs> it is it's that's that's just the, the nature of the beast. It's um it's the nature of the beast. All right, let's let's go to the next one. Um Q, this question is for you. Can you recall the time um, when you were messed up at camp versus a receiver or tight end um, who he could tell was a talented but but lacked, like, the confidence? Like, something like Travis Fogum. Like, you knew that they can be potentially, like, really good player, but they could have lacked the confidence or lacked the dog at times. Like, is there a particular player, whether it was a wide receiver, a lineman, a running back, Anybody can come to your mind, teammate or, or against? Um, there's not – like, I can't really, like, think just off mm -hmm. the top of my head. I mean, I remember, um, you know, one guy that that um, really kind of stuck out in my head, and he was – a lot of it had to do with him being, you know, a younger guy. But I remember Nate Allen, um, safety out of uh, South Florida when he came in. and Yeah. He ended up starting that year for us. And um, he ended up he ended up having a pretty good career. Uh, he left the Eagles, I think, um, a couple years after – yeah, after I left, and then mm -hmm. he ended up playing for, I believe, the Raiders and a couple of teams. But anyway, so he had a, he had a good career. But I remember him coming in as a rookie, and it's always tough. I mean, you 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 have a lot to learn at a short amount of time, and you know he had all the talent, and you know at that time Doc Doc had just left, and so it was it was kind of a situation where everybody's eyes were on him, and so mm -hmm. there were times where I saw him, um, you know, you get a lot of pressure on you, and not, there were times where I kind of felt and and saw that he was. You know, struggling a little bit with it, but you know, he was he was the type of person that you could never you could never really tell. Like you could tell he had a weight on him, but he never really he never really talked about it. He never went in the yeah. tank, but he never really like got angry about it either. So he was always very even killed, and so I think um, that was probably one of the reasons why I think he had a more successful career because although he didn't get angry and try to fight back. He also did not um, go into, you know, go into the tank. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, that, that was the first thing I thought about when you asked me that question. What about you? You had anyone um, in a similar um, position? I would say, like, um, when we had a younger Danny Amendola here, he was talented. Um, and but he lacked he lacked the confidence because I think it's because of the guys that sometimes you, you play with around. Yeah. Um like certain guys, especially receivers, a quarterback can make and make or break your career if you're not like the perfect size, um, the fastest, the best hands. Like if there's some type of weakness, and a quarterback can highlight that with the way that he makes decisions or throws, it can kind of mess you up. Like mm -hmm. I told you, Reggie Brown with um, J uh, Jeff Ar Jeff Garcia was a Pro Bowler. Pro Bowl talent, but with Donovan, he was out of the league, out of the league quicker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just yeah. because the two the two skill sets didn't complement each other. Right. And I thought that the same was true with Danny because Danny had you know gunslinger quarterbacks, and he didn't have much time to react. And this offense was not in his best suit, right? Where you can get a lot of motion. And there's return routes and, and and jerk routes over the middle where you go in and stop and have an option. Yeah. And me, I never went in motion. You got to stand up and there's a dude right in front of you. You know what I mean? So you got to get open the hard way, the old school way. <laughs> and um, his body wasn't built for that. So I thought that he lacked confidence when he was here because he wasn't in the, in the best situation for him. You know, so yeah. uh, and, and that has to do with players around you. That's got to do with coaching. You know, yeah. so there's a place for certain people. Um, there's a there's a place, but, you know, everybody got to like kind of find that place. Like, can you imagine Darren Sproles like 
um, you know, being a Baltimore Raven or something like that or a Steeler or something. It, it just doesn't yeah, go doesn't well, fit, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's not his strongest suit was just pounding it between the tackles. You know, it's just not – you, you got to figure out that that thing for a guy. And I yeah. think that has something to do with it. I remember when um, when Danny Amendola came, he was he was on practice squad, and he was – he was routing everybody up on, on scout team. <laughs> I remember being so mad because I'm like, how can we not guard this dude? Like, you know, if you when he first came in, he was a tiny little guy, didn't really say much. Yeah. You know, looked like Tweeter from Varsity Blues, you know, and he's just out there just just routing everybody. I'm like, this guy can play. You know, he can play. Thing, he, I think Dallas picked him up off our practice squad and he was gone. And, and he was gone. Like, yeah. yeah. He went to the Rams and it was over. Yeah, yeah. So no, it was um Dallas. I think he was in Dallas before us. Right. Yeah, Dallas, and then he went. No, was it Dallas after us or the Rams? Was, I don't know. It was either he yeah. went, he came from Dallas and then ended up some. But anyway, he yeah, had but, a he, good but he balled and he balled and ran, and he had a really good career. And he could play. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that he needed the right situation. Absolutely. So, and and I thought it was stressful for him being in a situation that wasn't for him. So I thought that he lacked some confidence when he when he went with like the top offenses, you know, and with quarterbacks that we had at the time that can throw it, you know. Yeah. When he was in the scout teams, that's what I'm saying. When he was with the scout team, when he was running somebody <laughs> else's offense, he was like a pro bowler. When he was running our offense, it was a different dude. <laughs> that's funny, though, but it, it's like that. It, yeah. it, it can make or break you. All right, so let's let's talk about, like, like the roster tango a little bit. Let's talk about this. Right. So during this time, there's a lot of jockeying for position for teams and there is contracts that are not favorable for teams. So if you have a veteran that's making five million dollars, you know that um, you can't trade for him because of that contract. And what they're saying is, is that his play is not is not adequate because his you know, because his contract, his, his play doesn't match his contract. Right. So what they'll do is they'll cut you at the end of training camp. Because if they if you're on a roster um, for their first game, you're guaranteed that that salary. So they'll cut you and then bring you back week two at a lower salary. So those th types of things happen. And Jordan Howard doesn't make that much, right? He's on league minimum, um, but they cut him. And are they going to bring him back week two, or are they cutting him to um, just because he's at the age of his career where he's just um, disposable? What do you think? Yeah, that's. That's a weird one because when I first saw it, that was really my first thought. I was like, okay, maybe they don't want his – maybe the Eagles, they want to make sure that they have him available because a lot of times, I mean, if you look at the way he played in the preseason, I thought he absolutely was going to make the team. I thought his salary wasn't high, wasn't too – well, I, I didn't know what his salary was, but mm -hmm. um, I thought that he absolutely earned a spot on the team. And so today when I saw that he got released, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Maybe they released him because, you know, yes, they would like to have him – at some point during the season, maybe if, you know, a guy gets dinged up, we need to bring him back in, but also don't necessarily want to guarantee a salary because if you're on the opening day roster as a veteran, a vested veteran, you get a, a guaranteed salary. And so, you know, that was my first thought. Maybe um, maybe that was the deal. So now you can bring him back week two and his salary isn't, isn't guaranteed. And if you need to release him the next week, you're not really paying for an entire year's worth of, of, of having the player on your roster. Mm -hmm. But then when you told me, you know, when we talked about it earlier, you said that um, his salary is not. So now I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Maybe maybe it's a situation where they're possibly trying to find another back on yeah. the market. I don't know. It's it's a weird, it's a strange thing for me. Yeah, because we thought that he played well enough to be on the roster, and everyone yes. did. And he's the changeup. Um, because you got Boston who can play, he can do a little bit of everything. And you got Kenny, um, game world that can do a little bit of everything. And you got miles, right? Um, none of them are bruisers, right? right? And Jordan makes sense for the roster to have one bruiser that is no nonsense, one cut and I'm going, I'm not dancing with you. I'm going forward. You had that when you won a Super Bowl in LeGarrette in Laguerre Blunt, right? So that type of style works and it's and it's and it's advantageous for any football team so it's just a foregone conclusion that uh, we need this type of runner so he should make the team and most team carries for run running backs right for special teams or something else and now that's the point that i want to get to for the for the thing that you that you should know is that 
when you're not number one running back, you got to do special teams. Yeah. Right. So we know that Boston can kick return. He's not the greatest at catching punts, but Kenny can kind of do both. Right. Um, and then after that, Jordan Howard is just a running back only. Jordan Howard is not um, a kickoff return guy. He's not a punt return guy. He's not a front line kickoff guy. He's not a punt re punt return block guy. He's yeah. not a punt guy. He doesn't do anything else. And now you have to establish value in order to be in the league. You got to mm -hmm. be good at more than just running the ball. You got to be good at more than just catching the ball if that's not the thing that you're starting at. You got to mm -hmm. be more. You can't be a one-trick pony. It's only 48 men that's going to be dressing during that game, right? So mm -hmm. if there, if it's only 48, you have to be good at something else. So kids out there, um, someone that's watching this, you got to have more than one talent. One in, like You got to bring something else to the table. It's like, you know, you have to. Um, so I think that it's because they don't have another guy um, that's going to benefit them on special teams. If you're going to have that fourth guy, I might as well get a younger guy that is that I can use on special teams that may be really fast, really strong, something that something that's going to equate to being good at special teams. So that's what I would think. If if they're not going to have Jordan come back week two, or they don't want him right now. Um, and then the other thing, when you have a veteran like this, when you get to a certain age, you become disposable. At the yeah. running back position, at a certain age, you become disposable. They already have a sestra of value. You're nothing more to the NFL and to most teams as an uh, option C. If my top running backs go down, I know this guy I can pick on a, pick up on a waiver wire to come in and do a good job for me, but I don't see any future with him. He's just a Johnny right now. He's not Johnny long term. And yeah. that's just the truth. And I think that's the case for Jordan Howard at this age. He's put his tape out there and people don't value that type of runner anymore. They're valuing guys that can do more with the football than just run a, run in between the tackles and get three yards. See, and that's, that's my thing, though. Like, on this team, right, and you kind of alluded to it, you got Boston Scott, mm -hmm. you got Gainwell, and you got Sanders. They're pretty much the same back, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, can can even Sanders be on the field on third down, right? He's He hasn't shown that he's well, his, his hands, his man has been, been, been suspect a little bit lately, and, and I just think it's mental. It's, that's yeah. the craziest thing. His hands has been suspect, and I just I think it's all mental. Right. And then so you, you got that. So then there's a game well, who's a rookie that you're going to have to rely on. May or may not work out. Small, right? big Small. blitz, blitz put, um, yeah. pick up like that don't match. And then you got Scott, who's he's he's a good third down back, third down option. You know, he'll stick his head in there. He'll catch the ball at the backfield. But you remember, you remember the catch he made last year is the Giants. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah, right. That may have been the best catch by a running back I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> like that was a hard catch. The right side of the end zone, win the game versus Giants. I was like, I was looking at the game and I'm like, dude, did he just catch that for a running back? Really? <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen it done like that for a running back. Like, I, uh, yeah. I don't know if it was luck, but. It, <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it wasn't no yeah, luck. I'm just messing. Against the Giants, against the Giants, it was, that was fate right there. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was awesome. Yeah. So, so you're, you're right. Third down back, you can use, you can use him. Yeah, so you know, I, I just my my thing is is um, so you got three of the same three of the same backs, and then, I don't know. I just I to me I was looking at it as as I thought that um, that uh, Howard was the sec will be the second back. And, yeah, um, just from a for defensively preparing for these three different backs, these scat backs, speed guys that can you know get down the field, catch the ball. Um, and then you got a bruiser back there. Like, I just feel like that puts much more pressure on opposing defenses. Yeah. And so I, I just, I guess from a, from a fan and, and kind of like a scheme and a defensive thinking defensively, I'm like, now it's easy for me. If I'm playing it for, you know, the Eagles, like, okay, now I ain't got to worry about a bruising running back. Now I got to yeah. teach my linebackers. Okay. This week it's going to, if anything it's going to be pass passing game. Right. Yeah. We're going to work nothing but pass drops. We're going to work nothing but man. Like, that's the type of stuff we're going to get. You're, yeah. So it, it makes you kind of – it makes the de the defense to not worry about a certain dimension. Now, yes. with with that being said, you know what it makes me – it kind of makes me think that the NFL is just going away from this type of runner. 
Yeah. And it, because it's trendy, the NFL is trendy, right? They go with the, 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 the latest and the greatest. And this runner is not, he's sort of like the third down receiver. Like the NFL is going away from that guy as well. Like a, a guy like, like myself or Tom Waddle or, or any, any guy that was over the middle, catching the ball, moving the chains, fourth down, critical situation, whatever it is. The league is going away from players like this. That And, and here's the danger of it, Q, is because, yes, when a game is going well and, you're, and your star players are getting the ball, it's good. You don't need those players. But guess what? What happens in the playoffs? Yep. <laughs> you don't get big plays. Yep. In the playoffs, the teams are good. And you got to fight for first downs and third downs. And you got to fight for two and three yards. Yeah. You don't get five and six and seven. And guess what you need? Those players that you didn't think that you need. Yep. When mm -hmm. the game is tight in the fourth quarter and everyone is dog tired and you need a first down, second down, third down, a couple three yards get a, to get. You know, how many times have the Eagles um, lost the a fourth and one running the ball? Like, we've seen that so many times over the years of us not being able to get one yard. Oh you know what? You, you know who you need for one yard in a critical situation? Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard. <laughs> and, 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 and this is the thing that kind of blows my mind is because we get so enamored with the stylish and the speedy and fast player. And it's like, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. But guess what? The dessert is good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's going to make you sick when you need it the most. Yeah. You know? But listen, let me get some of these potatoes. Yeah. Let me get a little of the steak. These essentials. Essentials to playing this game is those type of players. And you need them at, at some and, and at, at some point, you're going to need a player like that. Yeah. And uh, so so I mean, it may come back to bite the Eagles if, if another team comes out and say, you know what? I need to get a another running back. You know who may need them? Is um, Baltimore with J.K. Dobbins going down, right? So you, yeah. you you may need him, and you may and he fits their type of scheme. So, yeah. but you do have you have the other one there though. But yeah, we'll see. But the same thing is true for Richard Rogers, um, Andrew Adams, Hassan Ridgeway. All of these players um, are not the sexy player. Richard Rogers comes back every single year for some reason because guys <laughs> get hurt. He comes back. He's disposable at times, but when you need him to make a play, he makes a play. He doesn't yeah. run fast, but he catches the ball every time. Yeah. You know, I think the NFL should expand the roster. I've always said that. Yeah, 53 the, is tough. The, the, the NFL roster should not be 53 players. Yeah. It it's, should not. It's they, gotta be. It, 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 should, it should at least be 60, 65 players on the NFL team. Agreed. Agreed. Um, it has to be. It, it's it's too it's too taxing on it's it's too many transactions that has to happen that have to happen in order for you to like you got to cut a player in order to get a kick returner, or if the kicker if the kicker gets hurt somebody getting cut in order to get another kicker in it's it, it's so many like things that has to take place when it when it's unnecessary. Yeah. But let's let's go to the next point because I can go down that train and that path <laughs> for years. All right, so let's get to a to an interesting topic. Wide receivers, one of my favorite. Look at <laughs> I, I clap like this. I said, like <laughs> <lead." laughs> So I was getting excited about the wide receivers. All right. So we know that Travis has gotten cut. The axe. Um, you feel bad for those for those guys. Um, they they get cut. And um, I had a coach, um, I had a coach uh call me today. Um, Joe P calls me, he calls me you know, probably every couple of months. And he's a very positive guy. He's like, man, Jason, I got these cuts coming up. And, uh, and you know, it's one of my worst times for the players, you know, because it's hard to talk to them. I was like, I was like, yeah, it's dreams realized and it's dreams destroyed. But mm -hmm. on both ways, in both circumstances, there's always valuable lessons to be learned. And those lessons make you your character as a man, whether you have the dream realized or you have the dream destroyed. Um, is going to build your character and make you a better person in some way. So it's it's a tough thing to do, but at the end of the day, it's going to help. It's going to help these men. Um, so that's the kind of perspective I have about it. Because sometimes you can be like, "Man, a kid wanted it," you know, but but him yeah. being cut is maybe the thing that he needs in order to propel himself to the future. Yeah. I got cut four times um, by NFL teams, but I'm a Pro Bowler next year. What if that's the story for Travis, Travis Fogel? 
And what was that? What 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 if that was the thing that that he needed in order to 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 advance in his career? Or John Hightower to get him to wake up, you know? So and let's talk about that. John Hightower, talented dude. And these are things that we talked about. We've already talked about this. We already said the movie that was going to play out, right? That 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 he's been um, getting attention for the wrong things. What's on his social media? How fast he's driving around the neighborhood? or um, the things that he's interested in, cars and stuff like that. And it doesn't seem like he's interested in football. That's been the MO on him. And in practice and around the facility, people question his love for the game. So when you have that and you have a guy that came in with you like Quez Watkins, that's putting that out there that I'm working my butt off. And not only was he working his butt off, it's showing up in the way that he's performing on game day. And in practice, people, he let everybody in the NFL know that, you know what, I run a 4-3-5, 4-3-4, and it's legit. And mm-hmm. you're going you're gonna to know my name. He let people know that in doing training camp, doing preseason, when most people are not even paying attention like that. So, um you have that guy in your class that was drafted after you. Was he drafted after? I think Quez was drafted after John. Yeah, John was yeah, four, John, and he yeah. was five or yeah. five and six. I can't remember. But yeah, so you got that guy that's like kind of drafted, you know, um, after, and and he's coming in, showing up, showing showing the initiative, and you're not, and they're looking around like, dude, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And so all the talent in the world. When I was there, I said, listen. John Hightower runs the best routes on the team. Now, that's second to Devontae now because Devontae is crispy. Um, But extreme talent as far as route running. We'll get open on anybody like Q. You know the head shakes and stuff I used to do? He he has all of that in his bag. All of it. He has all of that stuff. And can get open, run, 4-4. Boise State, run, can do all of that stuff. And everybody at Boise State can run. Like, I don't know what y'all used to do. Y'all, be, y'all used to be able to run, though. <laughs> we still can run, man. Yeah, By the way, check us out Thursday night. You know, we got UCF Thursday night, ESPN. That's not my uh, shameless plug, Boise State. Oh, we, man. I'm coming I'm, up I'm, with I'm, a win. I'm, Listen, I was just about to body slam that, right? <laughs> I was about to give that an off-the-rope elbow. Hey. Uh, my man, man Andy Avalos, the head coach, man. Check him out, man. First year. First y'all, in the, y- y'all in UCF or y'all in Boise State? We at UCF. Oh, I'm glad. That's good. You yeah, know why? Because I don't want to have my eyes hurting from that blue grass. <laughs> Get out of blue, here. Grass shouldn't be blue, okay? <laughs> I tell tell everybody in oh, Idaho I said that. <laughs> Be careful now. But yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see myself going to the mean streets of Idaho <laughs> like, anytime okay. soon. All right, you, okay. keep messing, you keep messing with that blue. They're going to show they up got, at your they house. They're going to show up at my house, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. The, um, so so you got you got Hightower that has all of these abilities and never, never put it together. You got opportunity after opportunity. So... Seeing him get cut wasn't a surprise to me. It's just a shame because I think he has pro bowl ability. And sorry for smacking my mic, but I think he has pro bowl ability. And um, he got cut. But guess who did make the team? <laughs> he said it too. Jay Jaw made the team. They couldn't guard him. They couldn't stick with him. You can't see me. <laughs> they, can't. <laughs> they couldn't mess with him. Right? So he made the team. And there's a lot of people mad. There's yeah. memes, oh, yeah. man. Travis Fulton, <laughs> what happened? How how you choose this guy? And on and on and on. You know, JJ never got forgive, um, uh, never never got forgiven for the pass that he dropped in Detroit. This oh, city okay. totally jumped off the bandwagon. That first year he dropped the pass in Detroit for the touchdown, yeah, and that was yeah. it. He can do nothing <laughs> right after that. He been I can't get right from that moment. Y'all need to get over it. Okay. Yes. Is he a second round pick? And should he been in that position? Probably not. But is he an NFL player that made an NFL roster by his work ethic and by him had playing special teams and by him earning it? Yes. He beat out your favorite player, Travis Fogum. It wasn't by chance. It wasn't by luck. He actually beat him. And that's true. Mm. It's true. Get over it. 
It wasn't Howie. <laughs> it wasn't the receiver coach. It was nobody else. They had opportunity. Actually, Travis had the better opportunity because he was running with the starters at the beginning of the camp. He had better opportunity. Jay Jaw climbed his way back in there. You know, second yeah. round. I hear him talking about me. Here I come. Make a play in the last preseason game. Maul somebody. Break a tackle. Go for a touchdown. You can't see. See me. <laughs> I'm yeah, good I, for Jay Jaw. That's it. <laughs> I, I like it too, man. I, you know, I I started after our, our last time talking about him, I started to watch him a little bit closer and really start to kind of break down. And, and he definitely has a ton, a ton of, of potential. And he's, he's a situation that what really, what really made me think about it, the way you put it was like, you need to have that one receiver that's going to go in and, and dig out guys. That's going to go in there and block. It's going to go in there and do the dirty work. Yep. It's going to go in there and, and do what needs to be done. And, you know, as soon as I saw they made a team, I'm like, yep, that's that's the guy right there that's going to be doing that stuff. And so I'm I'm good. I'm good with this. I'm yeah. good with this, with, with them adding them. Especially because, you know, when you, when you talk about the mental of Hightower, when you talk about the mental of um, of um, Fulgrim, it's just, it just was a disaster waiting to happen in terms of, you know, potentially down the line with the yeah, new coaching down the staff. Line. You know, down with a new coaching staff. So, you know, I think that they got this right. I think I agree with you 100 percent that he's he's gonna be he's gonna do much better in the second in the second coaching staff than the first. Than the first staff. coach staff. Let's put, Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and you hear those rumblings as a player. You hear those rumblings, and for 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 JJ, oh, he's a bust. The DKs, not only from the fans, but from the organization mm. and people questioning you. Mm. And how he coming up to you, asking you questions. Why didn't you do this and that? Like, like he's a receiver coach and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so you have those things that may occur. And I'm good for him that he made this roster. Will it be final? We don't know. John Brown got cut today. John Brown's been a, a, a good veteran player. You may need somebody like that. That's number five. But he doesn't give you special team value either. So if you're looking for special team value and you're looking for somebody to dig out the safety, looking for somebody that's more physical, because J.J. is South Carolina strong. The boy is strong. Like, he has to get in his mind his mentality of being a thug out there. And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to anybody, but – for what he has to do, be on special teams and be in that position, you got to be a thug because we call special teams the hood. Nobody, yeah. they, nothing gets nothing gets officiated in special teams unless it's <laughs> by the ball. They can grab your nuts, they can grab your ankles, they can do all of that stuff. They're not calling it unless it's near the football, and yeah. so nobody cares. Nobody's paying attention. So you got to be a thug mentality to play special teams. So if he can get that mentality, it helps you at receiver. But you can get that mentality. He, he, you, you don't have to. You can make your career in the NFL just doing special teams. Look at Matthew Slater. Look at David yeah. Tyree. Look at Kareem Osgood. These yeah. dudes that play receiver but never play receiver they just did they were really good at special teams david yeah. tyree had the super bowl catch but people don't know that david tyree was a glorified outfielder that the punter <laughs> would kick it up to the sideline he would run out of bounds and and, and, and yeah. talk with a guy right there on the five yard line every time you remember that time i used to be like oh my gosh they have this play down like <laughs> he was a monster i forget <laughs> who the punter was, was it was what, who was the punter's name it was the giants um yeah. it was the feagles it made yeah it that's was, was. Feagles it was for feagles. a while yeah it was Fegels because after that, they got the dude Dodge that kicked it to the shine, right? Yep, yep. He didn't, he didn't <laughs> last there very long. He didn't last that long. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now, we got we got the receiver position. So, now, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right. So, let's think about it. Are we going with the most talent? Are we going with the most consistent how is this going to shake out? You got Devontae, you got Jalen. We know that those two are going to be the starters. Mm -hmm. So we think. Quest can get in there too. I'm telling you, he can mess around and be a starter. Jalen not showing up or something. Mm -hmm. Anything happened. Quest is waiting in the wing, uh, in the wing, like waiting for somebody to slip, fall, something, because he's right there. Yep. And then you got old reliable. <laughs> G Ward. G Ward. And G Ward not even old, but he got an old soul. So you just think that he old. <laughs> G Ward is funny too. He talks about everybody. Really? <laughs> yeah, G Ward is hilarious. <laughs> he talks about everybody. And then uh you got JJ. So mm -hmm. how's this shaking out? Who's your starters? Um, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> that's easy, dude. 
So Devontae, obviously, Jalen, you know, and then you got Quez. I mean, it, it's it's Devontae, it's Jalen, your starters. Quez coming in in, uh, in 11 personnel situations. If it's a 11 personnel run situation, we're bringing Jay Jaw in. And then if we need to get a first down, bring Greg Ward in, right? He's going to work, work the slot. And so <sighs> I think this, this, this receiving – this receiving core on paper now is is looking pretty legit based on what we saw in the preseason. It's not, I know it's just the preseason, but you got the the star at Devontae, right? You mm -hmm. got the speedster, the 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 the, the speedster slash runner slash everything in Jalen Rager, right? You got the you got um Quez Watkins, another speedster, but coming into his own, right? Mm -hmm. You can work them in screens. You can work them down the field. Um, you got Greg Ward working the slot, third down mm -hmm. situations. You got Jay Jaw coming in, dig people out, maybe making big catches in in the red zone, maybe crack blocking on people, like doing the dirty work. I think this is a good receiving core, man. Like they got every I'm, they, they, they got have every right. box. They have every box like checked when it comes yes. to just the positions. Like they have a they have enough diversity. Yes, and yes. what thing what what guys what guys do besides the top three they kind of are interchangeable, but the runner for sure is Jalen Rager, yes. right? And Quez can run as well because we've seen what he can do with the ball in his hand. Um, but the stronger, more running back type is Jalen. Jalen Jalen's been a running back before, so mm -hmm. um, you know, so you you kind of have every box checked. Here's the problem. I think they have a lot of potential. All of it's unproven. You're going into a season where your rookie receiver is going to be your number one receiver. That's kind of scary for any quarterback or any organization, period. I know he's drafted really high, but it's a tough ask for yeah. you to go up and line up and get open on Jalen Ramsey or get open on, um, you know, Tredavious White or whoever the top corner is for that team consistently. And you don't have the experience of getting open at this level. There's going to be some ups and some downs. There's going to be some ups when he's playing against um, cornerbacks that are not proven. And there's going to be some downs when he's playing against savvy veterans because they have tricks that he doesn't know about yet because he had he hadn't played in NFL games. Right. Yeah. So um, that's kind of scary. But you do have guys that have that 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 does have some experience. Jalen has some experience. Quez has some experience. Greg has some experience. JJ. JJ Jaw has some experience. Now, here's where it gets interesting for me. It gets interesting for me because you have Devontae, you got Jalen, that's the outright starters. Greg is the smartest player out of all of them. He was next quarterback, so he knows the ins and outs of this offense. So therefore, he's going to know where to line up, how to line up, line other people up, not just know his assignment. And he's going to be a quarterback on the field for the receivers. And he's going to be blitz, hot read. It's very, very hard to keep Greg Ward off the field because with younger players, they make a lot of mistakes. You got a young rookie out there in Devontae Smith. Jalen Rager is not helping him get lined up. Quez is not helping him get lined up. So the person that's going to help all of these guys get lined up is is, is uh, Greg Ward. And if Greg Ward's not on the field, I think it's going to be problematic. Now, in situations, it's good to play your best three. But I think on the every down situation, Greg is going to have to be on the field by just because he's because he's going to never make a mistake and he's mm -hmm. going to help the other guys being so young. So it's going to be interesting to see. I agree with you that Devontae, Jalen, and Quez are the most talented, but it's going to be very, very hard to keep um, Greg off the field because yeah. of their youth. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see if they, if they, if they it, go man. out to get like John Brown or whoever else um, out there. We'll, we'll see how that, that, that plays out. I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't like that. I don't like the John Brown pickup. You don't like John Brown? John no, Brown I like. I like. Guy. I like John Brown. I just don't like the pickup right now. Like I just. Yeah, he's similar. He, he doesn't. He's very similar to to the top three. The top three. Mm -hmm. He's older, so you, you know you could be potentially bringing in some good habits. You could be bringing in some bad habits. You don't know. Yeah, with older players. And then, you know, it's just. I don't know if he offers any more than what we already have on the roster, other than experience. Yeah. And so I don't know. That's that's to me. I'm kind of the, the jury's out with me on that. Here's an interesting one, though. I'm going to switch topics on you real fast because I was like, Q would eat this up. <laughs> right. So listen, cornerbacks that made the roster right for us. 
We got you, Darius Slate. You got Steven Nelson. You got Devonte Maddox. You got Josiah Scott. And who am I? Who am I missing right now? There's um, one more that I'm missing. Um, so we know oh, him. Zach, Zach McPherson. Yeah, the Zach, rookie. Yeah, the, the the rookie. Right. So that's the cornerbacks. Desmond Trufant just got released for just, Bears. Right. I'm talk about that. Right. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. I'm sorry for, for no, 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 that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Right. So, 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 what do you think about that? Right. So, like, I'm talking secretive. Right. So, I got my <laughs> voice low. Right. So, <laughs> what do you think about that? Do you think okay? The, you think we are good enough with with um, Darius, Steve. And Avante, or do you do you like Avante still not unpro- still improving? I can I I can win games with Desmond, Darius, and Steve. I can win games with them. Yes, I know I can win games with them. Do I do I do I do it? <laughs> and 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 kind of stunt the growth and see what Avante can do, or do I do I give it up? Like that's hard, man. I I would have him on my roster. I, I I would have him on my roster right now. I put I, I wrote it right here. Desmond Trufant, <laughs> bring him in. Now, I I have to apologize. I haven't really I didn't I didn't know much about Josiah Scott. So that yeah. tell you everything I you need to know. Like, I know yeah. about Vante. I know about Zach McPherson. We picked him up late from Jacksonville. You know, I mean, that might be a situation where it bring Desmond in and. Jose, we might have to bring you back next bring week. Bring you to back. See what's going on. So, I, <laughs> well, you got listen, you got seven yeah. linebackers. Get rid of one of them. Yeah, you can do that too. Another sure. corner, right? <laughs> I've never seen <laughs> seven line. But seven yeah, they, they, they got Janard Avery as linebacker right now, so that doesn't count. That's yeah, true. True. Yeah. But yeah, I agree hundred percent. We we should we should be trying to sign Desmond Trufant right now. He yeah. he's definitely. Um, I saw that. I was like, in, in the slot. Yeah. <laughs> Especially he was out with his he, he was out with issues like family issues. Yeah. So part of his getting cut was was him not being available because of some family stuff that was going on. It wasn't just because he was lacking in football. It was just that he took um, took time off. I don't know if it was COVID or whatever it was, but it was something that had to do with his family. Yeah. Um, maybe even a death. I, 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 I got a lot of stories, you know, jumbled in my mind. Yeah. But um, I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. I saw it and I looked at who we had, and I was like, uh, I don't know. I would, I would give it a go. I would yeah, give it a go. That might make too much sense, man. You know how they do things. Oh like yeah, that made too much sense. We, we got, we got to shock the world. You know, we're the Eagles. <laughs> we, can, we can't take the easy one. We got to go for the big fish. We got to go for the amazing play. We want to be called the the geniuses. We want the annexation of Puerto Rico. We don't want. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> oh, I love that movie. <laughs> That's the we want. Of Puerto Rico. Of Puerto wow. Rico. <laughs> right? Oh man. That's, That's, That's what we cool. want. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So we've been talking about Q. We've been talking about the offensive line. And with the offensive line, we've been talking about like Landon Dickerson. He's finally cleared. Um He's been getting work and things on the sideline, trying to get get himself back in there. Isaac Selmalu is the one that would. So so here's here's two scenarios. I give you two scenarios. I'm not going to give you one scenario. I'm going to give you two scenarios. Mm-hmm. Jordan Howard, um, not Jordan Howard. Jordan Malata is going to see a bunch of able and capable talent on the left side this year at defensive end. If he soars, it's great for our team. It's great for the Eagles. Home run decision by Howie. And you got to give him his credit for getting a guy that was playing rugby. And in, you know, a a amount of time, three, four years, he's ready to be in a left tackle that's a Pro Bowl caliber player at the left tackle position because this year, if he plays really well, he's going to make the Pro Bowl because of the guys that he's going to be going going up against, right? So that's the that's the best case scenario. We want that scenario. We encourage that scenario. Please, Jordan, play well. Don't just sing to us beautiful songs and on your <laughs> ukulele. Just make sure that we that we are you know <laughs> playing well too, right? So we want that situation to occur. So. If Jordan doesn't play well, I'm not trusting the left side, the quarterback, um, blind side to Andre Diller. He's been getting steamrolled off, off, off camp. 
mm-hmm. by everyone, our players, the Jets players, and the <laughs> Patriots players, right? So if this is the case, maybe I can move Isaac there, who did a little bit of that during the Super Bowl run because JP, JP was out yeah. that year. Wow. Mm-hmm. He got killed earlier in that year when JP went out, when they went up to Kansas City, right? Yeah. But later, he played all right, you know? And you move Landon in there, so that's the scenario. Or you go Isaac for a little bit, let Landon fully recover, get the grass, get practices under his belt. But eventually, this kid is going to be on this football team. He's going to be starting. Yeah. And it's going to happen this year. The kid yeah. is a player. If he's not injured, he's a winning player. He's already, right now, he can be a Pro Bowl caliber guard or center. Yes. Like, the kid, the, kid, the kid can play. So there has to be some room made, and I think it's going to be Isaac at some point in this, in this season. I don't know when it'll be, but if Isaac has a bad game, that kid's going to be all on his heels. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and that's... That's the nature of the beat. I mean, that's the game, right? That's yeah. that's that's part of it. And this, you know, you can say it's it's unfair, it's it's not fair. This is not the best play. We we said it on this show multiple times, the best play. And if that happens to be Landon Dickerson, it has to be yeah. Landon Dickerson. So I that, that, that there shouldn't be a more insecure person. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Let me stop playing. You know? Let me stop playing. I mean, you gotta play your confidence. Go out there, Isaac, play your confidence. Yeah, we got I mean, that young boy in that, in that right there behind you too. Yeah, you been, can't focus on that. And it's the perfect. I mean, it's the perfect situation that that keep you know, him Isaac and that he can control his his, his future. Right? Yeah. You, you, you want you want to keep starting? You better ball out. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure that Jordan ball out. He know who he, he know what he's supposed to be doing. Because just like you said, like just how you figured that out, that might be a situation if Jordan's not doing well. They might say, okay, land in here, guard. Isaac, you go back out the tackles, right? So I didn't even consider, I didn't even think about that. I forgot about that happening um in that Super Bowl run. So, you know, I don't know if 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 Isaac wants to necessarily go back out to left tackle. Either. Nobody wants to go back out to left tackle that's been inside for so many years, right? The Super Bowl 2017. Man, I've been playing inside for four years right now. You want me to go back outside? I don't want to do that. Like people think that's like easy. Oh, go from the left side to the right side. No, that's a big difference. That's a like even moving over one spot. It's a big difference. Your level of athlete has just increased by six hundred points, right? Yeah. And it's um and and that was Big V too. And then but but Isaac was in there sometime at some yeah. point. He was there early, but that was Big V. You get the point. You um, get the, but, yeah, yeah, he was the in there too. Get off me, Jeff. Sending those <laughs> messages. We wanted to be wrong on that one. <laughs> no, just message. <laughs> <laughs> we just joking with you. Thanks for the information. <laughs> but yeah, so but 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 he had he did have some experience outside before. Um and yeah, so so we'll we'll see how that shake we'll see how that shakes out. Yeah. Um Jordan Malata. Jason Peters, staple, not while he was at the end of his career. Like I told you, because Jay, Jay was my man, hundred grand. Love me some Jason Peters. But that boy know how to get some get some paper. Oh man, he's still he's boy, stealing. He's still stealing. <laughs> boy. Uh, I thought he was the out the league. I forgot. Show Where is he at now? I forget what team he's at. I was like, your you ways. <laughs> <laughs> For real, man. Shoot. Yeah, boy, still stealing. He's in he's like, he like a uh, backup quarterback at this Bears, point. But I don't think so. But he's with the Bears, like. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll see. It. He like, yeah, he like Charlie Batch. We man, we, we were <laughs> Charlie talking Batch about Charlie Batch today. Like I think he just retired what two years ago, three years ago. <laughs> he was, I think he was in the league before I got in the league. Like that's how long he played, and he was a backup for he most of it. Yeah, he's a backup. <laughs> come in, come in. To Ch- Charlie will be ready though. Charlie come in and win this game. Ben, I got you that one game. Got in the playoffs, and you go and do it. He's gonna be yeah. Justin Bass threw a touchdown on me in the in the preseason game against the Steelers one year. Uh, oh man, that was like my he's a good player though. He's a good man. He, good player. He could throw. I, I was a young player. I'm like, he ain't this Charlie Bass man. Yo, he Char- was he was dicing us up. Yeah, Charlie Bass like, boy, I, look, I can throw this thing. I just don't want to play. <laughs> I just don't want to play. I can go somewhere else and try to be a starter, but that's too much. I, my my family yeah. too comfortable. 
For real. <laughs> I get this kids, in, my kids in school. I'm just going to I can get this I'm break this dollars. tape down for for Ben, Big Ben, break the tape down for him, make sure he got his yeah. water and all that stuff. Sure. All that stuff. I, I'm straight. <laughs> Dude, there is literally backups that don't want to go in the game. <laughs> I, I've never, like, I've seen it. Like, I've seen it on the Eagles. I've seen it on Carolina. I didn't see it in, in, in Kansas City. But there's definitely backups that just don't want to be in the game. they like, dude, they, like, the quarterback get hurt. they like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You see it all the time. My coach in the youth, the youth programs and, you know, coach at the high school. But usually in the youth programs, a lot of the dads, they want their – their son to be the star quarterback. You know, yeah, quarterback. always. Man, you want your you want your kid to be the backup quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the NFL. You want them to be have a, a nice long 15, 16 year career. No no five games <laughs> played. <laughs> bank account, bank account on F. Yeah. And, 20, uh, 16 <laughs> for 23, four <laughs> touchdowns career. <laughs> One interception. <laughs> and then they just retire when they want to. They don't even get pushed out. There. They're like, you know what? Uh, oh, he's a, he's a locker room guy. <laughs> only, only applies oh, to, the, to, to the backup quarterback. All right. All right. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so how are we feeling about the offensive line? Okay. As, as projected, left to right. So we got um, Jordan Malata, Isaac Samalu. Jason Kelsey, Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson. That's what we have as offense line. Leonard Dickinson right there on the outside, um, waiting for his opportunity, trying to, to, to break that starting, which he possibly, which he, which he, which he will. So um, what do you think about the offensive line? Do you think we are adequate enough to win this division, be keep us in games? Yeah, I think what do you what do you think? I think this is I think they got it right here again. Um, barring injury, of course, as mm -hmm. always. This this line, and they're getting older, um, but I, I think that this this line can definitely, um, you know, do very well this season. Now, we got we got a tough test this week with our with our opponents, but I think this line, I think they got it right. You know, obviously, left tackle is a big question. Not only say a big question mark, but that's mm -hmm. going to be the main thing. Can can Jordan? Can he take the next step and really lock down that position? And if he can do that, I think everything falls into place. Yeah. And then, you know, worst case the scenario. Definitely the key. That left yeah, side yeah. is definitely the key. You know, because I think the thing that's that's great is is Landon Dickerson's versatility. Um, and him being young, let's say we're in the season and Brandon Brooks does go down. I, I'm confident that Dickerson can hop in at the right guard position and help, right? Mm -hmm. Um if Kelsey goes on, obviously he's played center before he can hop in there. So I think him him being just on the outside and not necessarily starting right now is actually a better thing for the team long term wise, because if something does happen injury wise, it'll be easier to kind of plug him in instead of having him in one spot and then trying to move everything around, trying to reshuffle everything. So I think it, I think they're in a good spot, you know, and mm -hmm. again, it all falls on how Jordan develops there. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think it's I think it's Jordan is the key to it because you're at the most important position on the offensive line. You're going to face the steepest talent. Um, they're going to they're going to attack you because Brandon and Lane, right? Because let's go to the left side. Yeah. Let's send everything to the left. Yeah. That's yeah. Or send, on, on there on the, to the right. Let's send everything to the right from defensive perspective. Let's send everything over there. Mm -hmm. So. He's going to be challenged like none other because of those three guys, Kelsey, Brandon, and Lane, and, and Lane being attached again, right? So everything is going to come, stunts, everything is coming that way because mm -hmm. they're the unproven guys. They're going to be thrown in the kitchen sink. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's all about them too. And um, so, so I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. And I think it, it, it determined – I think I know where we're running football. Um, mm -hmm. We've oh, always yeah. ran the ball right. Yeah, <laughs> we've all yeah. ran the ball right, and we got Brandon you? back. You got you got to run it there. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, so I, I'm I'm confident in that group. I think that they're the second strongest group on our team. Yes. Maybe first, maybe first, maybe. But I, you got to give that to the D line. Yeah, we got Fletcher. I, I, I think Fletcher is is dominant 
and you got Javon and you got Brandon that's really, really good. You got Ryan that's really good. You got um, Josh Sweat that's coming on. You got Derek Barnett that's waking out of his fog because Josh is threatening him. So I think that position historically has been better for us, the defensive line. Yeah. But if first or second is are the two most important positions. Now, when yeah. you consider that, we got a shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as much as we're talking about four and whatever, or six and whatever, seven and whatever, we got the. If Jordan Malata and Sam Malu can play together and do well, yeah. the two most important positions, offensive line and defensive line, we got a shot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you today, if if those two can play well, we have a shot, ladies and gentlemen. We do. <laughs> we got a shot. And that means that we're going to have some pass checks. We have some run. And then you add in Jalen with being able to run. Oh, yeah. We got a shot. Let's go. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, we may have a shot. <laughs> you never know. So, so um, I, I'm encouraged by that. Um, let's, 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 we, we're going to skip through a lot of this stuff, but let's, let's talk about this. We, we, we're happy to have Rodney McLeod back, right? Have another guy that's back finally coming off his injury. Um, been a long time coming. Um, Jalen Hurts has been named the starter. We know that it was always been that way. For some reason, they want to play the the uh, the competition game a little bit too long, uh, but it happened and occurred. Let's talk about this big picture. Philadelphia Eagles. How are you feeling? Roster top to bottom. I don't want you to go through line by line. Where do you think we struggle at? Where do you think that we're good at? Do you think we have a chance considering all factors? Do we need to make an improvement to this roster in order to take us over the top? What would that look like? Yeah. Um, I, I think 17 questions with yeah. one question. <laughs> All-time record. I think – so I think given <laughs> given the um, the roster, the roster coming into to training camp, I first of all, I feel like – Every position besides, you know, Jordan Howard at running back, I feel like that was – I would have liked to see him on the roster. Mm -hmm. And um, keeping seven linebackers, I think those two decisions were the only that didn't quite jive with me and didn't really make a lot of sense. I think offensive line, they did a great job. I think D-line, they got it right. I think secondary-wise, um, I, I think they made the right decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I would have loved to see a little more help. In the safety position coming in via draft or <clears throat> um, free agency, but I, you know we didn't we were strapped for cash. So I think um, if everyone, let's say everyone plays up to even eighty percent of their potential, I think this team does very well. I think barring I think injuries is one thing that is very very scary. There's not a lot of depth at all no. across the board. And Thirty-five so, nothing. Yeah, depth wise, we are in trouble there. Mm -hmm. But assuming that for the most part we stay healthy, I think this is this is probably a, a, this roster is on the up and up. I think it's a roster that can definitely build towards the future. We got some young yeah. receivers ready to go. We got some young linemen ready to go. Some young linebackers, D linemen. So you know, I think right now it's a good base. I, I'm excited. I'm optimistic. Let's put it that way. Optimistic, optimistic. this season and where it's going to go towards. So I'm liking it. Yeah. I'm liking it. So here's my my thought process when it comes to the big picture. There's there is, like I said, offensive line and defensive line definitely the highlights of this whole ordeal. Yep. Which is the most encouraging and which is the most um when it comes to the most important when it comes to winning. Yes. Those two positions. Everywhere else, there is some type of problem. Except for running back. I would say running back is in it. Running back, tight end, they're good too. Yeah. You're, you're good. Running back, tight end, offensive line, defensive line. Everywhere else, including the kicker, there is problems, right? There's there's potential, but there's problems. Right, and when right. I say defensive line, even with the defensive line, you got four D tackles. I never loved that. 
Yeah. The reason I don't love that is because if you're in a system where you need two defensive tackles to play, you got Giovanni, got Fletch out. Both have had injuries over the last few years. Now your backups to them is Milt and Tulula. That, that <laughs> dude, right? So that's a rookie. Both drafted this year. Who didn't that, play that, very well. That didn't play very well in the preseason. So now that's your backups and your sub packages where those two need to be off the field. And you got to roll two more in or roll one more in, and you you've gotten thin really fast. You went from a, a A plus, A minus talent, B plus talent down to a C minus D talent. It's it's that's a very very big gap. Yeah, it's a very very big gap. So so you so you so you so you begin to get scared when you break down certain things, right? Um, but the receivers unproven, though I like the potential. Mm-hmm. Waiting to see. Waiting to see, but it's still unproven. There's nothing that you can sit there and say, "Hey, I can guarantee this." Like, no, I can guarantee that Devonte, I mean, that the Devonte Adams is gonna get open. I can guarantee you that Chris Godwin's gonna catch the football. I can guarantee you that DeAndre Hopkins, if the ball is in the air, he gonna bring it down. That's security. Yeah. Do we have that security? We don't. We don't. Yeah. We got potential, but it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sound like the bearer of bad news, but I'm just giving you reality. Yeah, yeah. I told you that the most important positions are good. Offense line, defensive line, quarterback, still unproven, though. I think that he has all the ingredients. Start getting into um, linebackers. I'm totally out. I'm out. <laughs> seven, seven linebackers yeah like i'm not out out because this is my team what i'm telling you is is that i just don't understand why we refuse to neg- why we re- re- why we neglect this position so often we don't try our best to upgrade this position we always want to fill this position with an undrafted guy six round seventh round guy like when are we going to draft a guy in the first three rounds at linebacker man damn Come on, help us out. Give us something. It's the center, center of your defense, the quarterback of your defense, right? Yeah. Like uh, it's one of the most important. And but it's it's a position that's never valued here. I don't Can get we it. get a three-down linebacker? <laughs> I'm tired of seeing everybody else with a three-down linebacker. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm tired of it. Me too, brother. Me too. I, man. Like, can, can we get one of that? You just seen what they did in Tampa with them two dudes out there, mm. Devin White and um and Church of Ethan. Like, we just we see like those dudes dominated the game. You need one of them. <laughs> For goodness sake. <laughs> All right. For other positions don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> quarterback you got problems safety you got problems i think you're i think that you got veterans that 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 nobody's going to be badly exposed but strength of the team is defense line offense line everything else just has to be proven defensive line tight ends um proven running backs you know defense line offensive line tight ends running backs everything else got to be proven that's what his team is yeah that'll do it for our show this week <laughs> To everybody out there, I am making Jeff in the back hesitate when it comes to ending this show and pressing the button because I'm going to say that we're ending about 17 times from here on out. We're about to end. No, we're not. Q have the last word. Me? Well, <laughs> call me off guard, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen. No. My name is Jason Avant. This is the Q&A podcast. I want to say thank, thank you to everyone that is tuning in, everyone that's watching our show. Thank you to Jeff and Adam and Hunter and everyone that's responsible for Inside the Birds. Make sure that you're checking us out Inside the Birds YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, um, and Twitter. Also, Amazon Music. Q always has the last words. I'm going to say my piece, and I'm not going to say another word, so I'm not tricking anybody. Go ahead, Q. <laughs> As always, man, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I love talking to you, brother. It's it's always fun, man. And uh, I'm excited for the season. You know, I, I think the Eagles did did a fairly good job with this with this roster. Let's see them put it to work, man. Let's see it. Let's see it start. Let's see it start soon. Line. Let's I go, man. <laughs> And y'all right, make y'all sure listen. I don't care what Jason say, man. Y'all make sure y'all check out Boise State on Thursday night, this Thursday night. All right, God's team.
<laughs> Boise State is God's team. Hey, listen, you may have something better to do, like watch the grass grow, <laughs> paint the house, clean the basement walls, wash dishes, something. 